everybody, and welcome to our top 10 quick comic picks. I'm Andy. I'm Matt. We're here with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And this is our real quick show where we show you about 10 of the biggest and best books that are coming out this week to your local comic book store, or maybe they're shipping to you in the mail. We don't know. Uh, but... Uh, before we begin, just remember, head over to infinityflux.net where you can order these books now, pre-order upcoming books, all that fun stuff, and make sure to like and subscribe our, to our channel because that goes a long way in putting us in front of a bunch more people to talk about our love of comics. So let's begin this week with one that I thought was fantastic. This is Titans Beast World number two. So we are continuing the Beast World story, uh, and now because of uh, Beast Boy and his turn into a giant Starro. These spores are raining down and turning millions of people into beast-like monsters. But it also includes some of the heroes as well. And this really follows Nightwing and Batman as uh, they are trying to help people. But doesn't look too great for Batman in this. Uh, what's going to happen? And... It's full of twists and turns and surprises. It's just a really fun It's issue. really, really good. The art is fantastic. Like, it's just a fun comic book. Yes. So, continuing the Beast World story into this issue. We're going to stick with DC, and we're going to talk about, even though we have first and second issues to talk about, I'm going to talk about Green Lancer number six, because this is my single favorite issue, my favorite single issue of the entire year across every title, every publisher. This is awesome because the whole thing is Hal Jordan versus Sinestro in just a big fight, uh, construct after construct, each one bigger than the last one, and they just go, they're just going they just going at it, and there is nothing better than seeing Green Lantern fight Sinestro, and that is this entire issue. It's amazing. Awesome. Next up, I've got Spider-Gwen Smash, number one. This is a new miniseries. Uh, I really like this one. It doesn't have anything to do with clones or anything. It feels like the last uh, Gwen Seth has done that. But this one uh, focuses more on her music career as Gwen, as is, she's trying to adapt back into her home world, uh, her home universe. Uh, and she gets, uh, they get a gig with the Mary Janes to tour with Dazzler. But of course, some uh, nefarious foes are going to pop up along the way. So a really fun issue of Spider-Gwen. Next for me is Daredevil Gang War number one. So this is the first issue of Elektra slash Daredevil's tie-in into Gang War. And in this one, she takes on the Heat, uh, who we've seen in the Daredevil series for a while now. Uh, but it's also, I believe, the first appearance of a mysterious assassin. I don't know her name yet, but she's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Elektra. Plus, this assassin works for somebody else who is supplying weapons to the Heat. So lots of mysteries to be solved, uh, lots of good action with Elektra just kicking butt, and uh, the artwork is really good, too. Cool, cool. And talk about throwback, we've got Batman Robin Lives. This is, uh, I know a lot of people are very excited about this, so the classic death of Jason Todd. Uh, it went one direction where Jason Todd died, but what if it went the other direction and he lived? So this is a pretty much a facsimile. It's got the original ads and everything, but with different pages showing that Jason Todd lived instead. So uh, I, I think there's about three new pages and it's some kind of augmented dialogue for okay. some of the other pages. Uh, but this is really cool. If you're familiar with this classic story, uh, I think a lot of pe people will have fun reading this and kind of seeing how it differs. And what are kind of some of the fallout of this? What does Batman say after the fact? Because that scene where uh, Jason Todd either dies or lives, is not the final page. So there's right. more after that. Yeah. So check that one out. I imagine this is going to be pretty popular this week. Next for me is, I love this one. This is Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees, number two. Uh, cute little animals uh, just dealing with a lot of murder. Uh, the, the citizens of Woodbrook are panicked after what they saw at the end of last issue. And Sam is uh, set out to solve the mystery of who murdered the 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 citizen on she wants to solve it on her own so that her own grisly crimes don't come to light next up i've got titans beast world tour gotham it's our next in the kind of tour series and our uh tie-in books with beast world but you definitely don't have to read this one to know what's going on in the series but this does kind of take a fun detour because this takes place immediately after issue number two with uh, Batman and Nightwing, you'll have to read the second issue of Beast World to know exactly what that uh, entails. 
but it's a fun detour and we kind of learn a little bit more about what's going on. Plus there's stories about uh, Harley Quinn as this giant rabbit. We've got Red Hood, we've got Huntress, Stephanie Brown, just a bunch of different stories all set within the Beast World time frame. And next for me is Batman Gargoyle of Gotham number two. Now, the first issue came out three months ago. So if you do pick this up, you might need to reread the first one just to jog your memory. But in this one, Commissioner Gordon is still investigating the murder of four different people uh, in Gotham. His investigation gets deeper as he realizes they actually have connections to Bruce Wayne's past. Um, but it's something that Bruce Wayne doesn't remember. We also learn uh, that uh, something about Bruce Wayne as a child is a little bit different than what is in normal canon. Of course, this is a black label book, so they can do whatever they want. But there is a little bit of a difference in his origin, I guess. And, uh, you know, you'll just have to wait and see what that is. And lastly, for me, I've got Batman Santa Claus Silent Night number two. This weekly series, right uh, leading up to Christmas and right afterwards, is really, really fun, especially issue number two, because we learn more about the history with Santa and Krampus and kind of what was their falling out and what is Krampus's goals. Plus, this has tons of cameos from other superheroes, some we haven't seen in a while. And we do learn in this that this series is kind of in current canon yeah. uh, as it refers to Night Terror. So really cool one there. It just continues to be really fun. And I love this idea of this weekly book mm -hmm. uh, just keeping you in the holiday spirit. So that is Santa, uh, Batman Santa Claus Silent Night number two. And the last for me is Batman City of Madness number two. Now, the first issue of this came out two months ago, so you may need to reread that one as well just to, to give yourself a little bit of a refresher. But in this one, the Court of Owls finally approach Batman to get his help dealing with the Batman from the Gotham Below. And he and Talon are going to go into the Gotham Below to try to stop this weird mirror version of Batman and also to save a young boy that the, the mirror Batman took down there uh, so, you know, really good artwork, uh, really interesting setting. Uh, yeah, so check that one out. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for watching. That was our top 10 quick comic picks. So hopefully that helped you out when you're going into your store this week to know what to grab. Uh, stay tuned for our longer show coming up. We'll be going over these books, plus their variants, and many more comics uh, coming up very soon. So until then, we'll see you next time. Bye.